Good morning, welcome, and thank you for joining us live at your table today. Before we get started with our discussion, maximum hospitality, minimal contact, serving your guests in the era of COVID-19, we would like to share some housekeeping items to keep in mind. All audience members are in listen-only mode, which means you are muted. We will be monitoring audience engagement on the dashboard and do encourage you to participate by using the question pane. There will be time for questions at the end of the presentation. Please note this webinar is being recorded and will be available online in the coming weeks. Now, without further, further delay, let me introduce our moderator, Beatrice Stein with Beatrice Stein Consulting, and our panelists, Kate Edwards with Kate Edwards and Company, and Mashama Bailey, James Beard Award-winning chef. Thank you all for being with Thank us today. Well, I will turn it over to you. I'll turn it over to you. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Great. Thank you so much. <laughs> so we're going to sort of co-moderate this morning. My name is Kate Edwards. Um, I'm a consultant based in New York, and we offer training and leadership coaching uh, for hospitality groups. And Beatrice? Hi, I'm a hospitality Hi. consultant, and I specialize in creating training programs, training materials for all levels of staff. I also have a non-for-profit called the Hospitality Project that trains disenfranchised populations in being skilled front of the house staff. Great. And uh, yeah, we, we are really happy to have Mashama Bailey join us today. Mashama, how are you doing? I'm doing well. Thanks, Kate. Uh, my name is Mashama Bailey. I'm chef and um, co-owner of The Gray and The Gray Restaurant, and I am living in real time COVID-19 right now. So <laughs> I have a lot to say. <laughs> yeah. Well, tell us where you're at. Um, well, right now I'm in Savannah. And um, today the restaurants are closed. Since COVID, we reopened um, both restaurants. And uh, we were only open, we went from six to seven days a week. Now we're open four days a week. So both restaurants are closed for service Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. So um, today is our day off, our consecutive days, our days off. So we do admin stuff on Mondays and we kind of like turn off everything on Tuesdays and let the managers um, have a day for themselves. Then on Wednesday, we get back in there and we start the ordering and um, we have meetings all day on Wednesday just to discuss the upcoming week. We changed our format because of COVID. So we um, were doing prefix menus now at the Gray, uh, which was a a la carte, uh, a la carte restaurant. We're doing prefixes and tasting menus at the Gray. We have a small uh, front bar area where, we, where we're doing um, smaller uh, smaller plates, I would say. And the, the Gray market, uh, the concept is really the same, sandwiches, lunch counter. Um, Great, um, so you're lucky you have a combination of indoor and outdoor dining, fine dining and casual dining. Exactly. The Gray is located in a in a uh, bus station, so we do have a huge opportunity um, to seat outside. So we have um, we probably seat about fifty percent of uh, about forty percent of our patrons outside. That's a great advantage. Yes. Mm -hmm. Cool. Why don't we just jump into our topic a little bit, and we we really want to hear more about some of the things you you shared a moment ago. Um, but if you could advance the slide, please. The first idea is this idea of comfort and perception, um, both for our guests and for our team members. And really trust is at the heart of, of everything. I know, Beatrice, you have some thoughts about trust and establishing that. Yeah, trust is the new hospitality. Um, what is really key here is, is being really transparent uh, internally and externally and communicating what you're doing, how you're doing it, and then physically showing what you're doing. So starting with staff. Right now, staff is really fearful. They're afraid. It's the only environment that a guest can go where they have to remove their mask. Every other environment, they don't need to remove their mask. But to eat and drink, you have to remove your mask. That exposes the staff and then also other guests. And so making the staff feel really comfortable, making sure that they're comfortable with your protocols, that they understand the protocols, that you are executing those protocols and really holding you know, their feet to the fire in that is important because it creates this level of trust. For your guests, the guests are 
want to be able to go into an environment where they feel like they're comfortable and they can trust you there's no fear they can see the hand sanitizer or the gloves or whatever it is that you're doing they want to be able to really see that and feel that and know okay i feel good coming into this environment so that trust is the new hospitality yeah and we have to really work with our teams to make sure they feel comfortable and confident expressing it um, both the safety aspect and then that hospitality piece because I, I don't know about you ladies but I've been to restaurants now where the staff is twitchy they're nervous they're tense and it doesn't feel hospitable versus restaurants where they do feel hospitable and that allows me to relax mm -hmm. so Shama what have you um, experienced now that you've reopened all aspects of your restaurant for the most part um, we're very transparent about how what we're doing to stay sanitized we we sanitize the restaurants on a daily basis uh, the porter or the porter comes in the buildings um, before we open and wipes down door handles and all surfaces and cleans the floors and the bathrooms and everything is all all highly touched surfaces are sanitized on a daily basis and during service the staff does that as well um you know if at the gray um when a when a guest sits down and eats we um we serve them hospitably and we sanitize the table and all surfaces once they leave the seats and everything and that's part of our service model now I love that you talked about um, those high touch areas because I agree with you. Those are the those are the, the areas of our restaurant where both our staff is going to be, you know, a little like you know, what's going on there, and also our guests are going to sort of put a, on a on a bigger lens of scrutiny, you know, what's yeah. happening there. And I love that you have somebody going through during service to sort of demonstrate that because that's that perception piece. Is it clean? You don't want people to wonder or worry, and then doing small actions to help build that trust because safety is is key now to our idea of hospitality based on you know to to beatrice's point for sure yeah and, i love, I love that yeah. position i love that position of the sanitizing captain or mm -hmm. or i read like a bunch of different um concepts that are doing that like somebody like you said who's just covering you know the restaurant all during service and and taking care of those high touch areas i think that makes everybody feel safer right and also it keeps the staff invested in their own safety and it reminds them that we're in this time of covid um, i think the hardest part was getting used to wearing a mask and 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 there's a there's a lot of things that come with that. It's hard to hear with the mask on when there's music playing and guests are sitting down and you're over you're leaning over them talking to them about the menu, um, and you know the eye contact is really big and so you know body language is huge. So providing a warm um, ex warm body language is key now. And when they feel engaged and comfortable about the, 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 the safety measures that are taken within the environment, then they relax. And like to your point, Kate, the guests relax. They right. relax. Yeah, and eye contact, I mean, even I notice that just walking through the world that we're in, eye contact is, is it. <laughs> you know, yeah. that's you yeah. really read people through their eyes. It's really incredible how how that's the focus these days. Yeah, yeah, I love that. Um, can we advance the slide, please? Something that we've talked about is um, a number of different types of guests. Do you want to walk through those, Beatrice? Sure. So we've identified three basic types of guests here. The rebel guest is still thinks it's 2019. Uh, they're in denial. They're the non-maskers. They just want everything to go back to the way it was before. Um, the compliant guest is the guest who reads all your protocols, follows it, wears the mask, is really highly, you know, sort of aware, but wants to eat out, but, you know, is, is following the rules. And then there's the high alert guest. That's the guest who wants to get out, but is just fearful. It's, they're afraid and, and, they, and they're watching everything that's going on around them. And it's amazing, I, as a guest, became what I'm, a, I consider myself a compliant guest, but I became a, a highly alert guest in an environment where I didn't feel comfortable. And so, you know, we go back to this discussion here of how, 
you know, you, you know, you can evolve and change depending on the environment that you're in. But I think that the challenge for the staff and for the and for management is that at one table you could have all three of these types of guests, right? They can all be in, all sitting there together, um, or, or and you have to manage them in different ways at different tables at different times. And so I think this is something to be aware of: is that everybody has to be in tune to the different guest needs and how to adjust to make them feel comfortable, mm -hmm. or or to deal with the rebel guest who who doesn't want to follow the protocols, right? Yeah, so Ms. Shama, what have you seen in terms of the evolution of your business, you know, going from takeaway to then full service dining, then full service indoor dining? What have you seen in terms of all these guest interactions? I've, we've seen all three of them, quite honestly. Um, you, you know, we, what's interesting, I'm gonna start in a little bit in the middle here, but what's interesting is that on Friday night or Saturday night, we had four rebel guests who came into the restaurant um, and they are local people and they came into the restaurant and um, we stop everyone at the front door and we, if they don't have a mask, we ask them to put a mask on and they proceeded to walk to their table and sat down. And it's sort of like, how do you how how do you navigate the people who just refuse to abide by the rule? And um and um and what we did was we sat them. We did was we sat them. We sanitized the area before we they. Sanitized the area before they. We spoke to them about their masks. We spoke to them about their masks. Provided them with masks. Provided and them with masks. And, and, and we proceeded to serve them. And we proceeded to serve them. Um, and how did um, they react? They react. They they a, react. They a, they were a, they, they were a, um a little they, um a little, a little this, I think. but it made the staff uncomfortable. But it made the staff because, because the staff noticed that they staff noticed didn't they want to comply. Didn't want to and so once they were seated, so once they were seated, they never got back up until they left the building. They didn't even go to the bathroom. And so I think that those types of instances we have to discuss to see what's the best way to provide hospitality to people who don't want to comply. For the most part, 99% of the people who come into the restaurant, they wear a mask. Um, but once in a while we get those rebel guests and the ones who are high alert guests, they want to sit outside. They do not want to come inside. And those guests, we understand. We had a, we had a rainstorm a few weeks ago and we had a little bit of, um, I, I mean, it was a huge downpour and we had to bring people inside. So then the high alert guests <laughs> wanted to come inside. So it was just sort of like, it's just, it's, it's people, people are in this weird in this emotional weird space, space that they have that to make sacrifices when they go out to eat. They understand that they're taking a risk and they have to make those sacrifices accordingly. So if you're here for dinner and you get dumped you on, get dumped and you're like, well, okay, I'll go inside now. But one thing we do have in the building, uh, we have these UV filters in our air conditioning, sy air conditioning system that allows um, to uh, clean, clean the air as it circulates. And we also have doors, bay doors that we open up. So we, we don't seat over 50% over capacity. Everyone is six feet apart. Um, so we, even in those trying moments where people had to stand and wait when 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 they got rain, when they were rained on we still had to comply and have everyone sort of wear a mask and and remain um six feet apart but it's hard yeah because yeah, you're in savannah we're in new york and that's what restaurateurs are getting uh summons or, or citations for is you know too many people and we're we haven't yet moved to indoor dining but even outdoors um, they're getting citations for too many people congregating in one space. So that's a challenge. The weather poses that challenge. What do you do with all these folks who are mid meal? Um, and how do you handle that hospitably? That's, um, that's a few a people left. Exactly. A few people left. Um, and also, 
when there when there was that initial rush of people coming inside people are standing next to each other in the in the in the area so it's our job to sort of quickly get them separated from each other because they're just seeking shelter so we had to we had to sort of stage people in different parts of the restaurant to keep them feeling safe and keep our staff safe did people put their mask back? I'm curious, did people put their mask back on once it started to rain? Yes. But those, but, but those double guests are the hardest ones because, like you said, they feel like it's 2019 and you want to, um, you, you want to kick them out, quite frankly. You do. And I think that um, sometimes they just they they kind of usher past in this way that poses this aggressive moment where you have to figure out how to diffuse that and the reason why i say it's an aggressive moment is because they're not complying so you have to say no and the the thing that you the thing that we don't want to do in our business is tell people they can't or no so you have to figure out ways to usher them and and keep them safe Safe. because they aren't you know, they aren't masked you know but one thing is like you cannot walk is like you, cannot walk out. you sit down you eat whatever but you can't walk through the building and i i don't know if we handled it the way that we sh i don't know how we could have handled it better but i definitely know that the staff noticed that they they just kind of ushered past and they didn't they didn't like it yeah it's, and staff still waited on them. They didn't feel uncomfortable. No, no, because they're protected. And, you know, the eating and drinking, you, you're you not going to wear a mask while you're eating and drinking. So there is that element of it. Um, but they definitely you know, just, just didn't feel, I don't think they felt comfortable because they talked about it. You know, I don't, they didn't complain, but they, they noticed, I should say. There are some restaurants that are asking people to keep their mask on when they interact with the staff. Um, I, I've uh, seen that, and, and actually, we, Kate and I, on the first uh, time we did this webinar, we had a, an operator, and she asked the the guests to keep the mask on when they interact with the staff, and then take it off when the food and beverage arrived. Is that something that you could do there, or is that not something it's something that we do most yeah it's something that we enforce mostly but i think this is just in reference to that the guest who just is like this you know it's not a real thing it's funny people <laughs> those are the people that those are the problem points for because the rules are you come in, you enter with a mask, you interact with a mask, you go to the restroom with a mask on. You only take your mask off while you're eating and drinking. And 99% of the people do that. And then there are those people who who just don't, who come in and they do the thing with the shirt right. over their faces, you know? It's like, that's not a mask. <laughs> that doesn't work. Doesn't work, no. Yeah, we went to a restaurant over the weekend, not in the city. So we ate indoors and we all kept our masks on. And then we talked to the server about like, what are people doing? Are they keeping their masks on while they interact with you or not? And she was like, no, 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 no. Don't worry about it. We're totally fine. We're, we're all sort of like, really? <laughs> she was like, no, 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 it's okay. But it was good to have a conversation with her. And she, she sort of made us put us at ease. So. I went out. Um, we I went to a restaurant um, for breakfast with a few friends a couple of weeks ago, and this and I haven't been eating out a lot um, just because <laughs> um, because I'm in the restaurant all the time. But it was interesting to be on the other side of it, and we had our mask on while we ordered. We had our mask on until food arrived, and as soon as we ordered, she was like, "You can take your mask off. It's fine." 
She was like, it's totally fine. So there is a c certain comfort level that the, the staff is are, are now the staff is now embracing, and I think that that's reflective of how the more we're learning about the virus, the more we're learning about how it's transmitted. I think there's a certain level with service people who are just like they know what they need to do. They know they need to wear a mask. They know they need to wash their hands. They know they need to sanitize surf surfaces. So I think that now that high High alert, um, the, that high alert that staff's having when this virus, when we first reopened, um, is starting to kind of um, dull down a little bit because their practices are so routine now. That's great. Yeah. Just as That's long as they, don't, about, right? Sorry. As long as they don't drop their guard, you know, like keep no, keep it, no, drop it. Yeah. It's just. No, 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 no. They wear, they're, I mean, I don't even see how they, they, it's funny. We have one woman who's like makes masks for the entire staff. So it's really oh, cool. sweet. Mm -hmm. That's great. I love that. Let's talk for a second about setting expectations. Um, you know, this idea of service has changed. And like we we're talking about with these different guests, what we're mm -hmm. expecting from them has changed. And it's really important to set ex expectations. Um, and if we can advance the slide, that'd be great. Whether it's about hygiene or about some of the rules that we might be setting now, um, and even changes we might make to the tabletop. So in terms of hygiene, like it's, we believe it's really important to make sure that the staff appears clean. We know that during the course of a service, sometimes your apron gets messy, et cetera, but we've got to start off our service um, as clean as possible, representing cleanliness as much as possible. Um, and the idea of wearing gloves is something that, you know, Beatrice and I have talked about a lot. Um, gloves only work if they're being changed regularly. Does your team wear gloves, Mashama, or no? No, not the service staff. The service staff doesn't wear gloves. The kitchen staff wears gloves um, when necessary. Like the garmage cook wears gloves for every um, plate that they make. Um, but the line cooks don't necessarily wear gloves. They use spoons and tongs and those types of things to um, cook the food. And plus, I, the cooking of high temperature, I think there isn't that transference. And then we sanitize the rims of the plates as they as they walk as they walk to the table. So if the line cook it puts up a plate. Um, whatever part of the plate that line cook touches, we sanitize before it goes out to the guests. And our staff, the, the service staff, they wash their hands every time they enter the kitchen. So if they bring a dirty plate into the kitchen, if they clear a plate, they um, take it to the dish pit and then they go straight to the hand sink, they wash their hands and then they line up to run plates to the, to the table. I love that. Yeah, yeah. me too. Yeah. So, Bea, do you want to talk about sort of setting the rules or establishing rules? So I think we, we've touched on this already is that, um, you know, both sides of the table are uncomfortable. And so when you set out your expectations for people, they're, you know, it's the, they need to see it and feel it. And so I think we I think we've touched on this quite a bit already is that, you know, those rules is everybody follows them, and then that gives the the, the guests that that comfort in in that. Um, you can do some fun things that kind of remind people, like um, offering hand sanitizer when people sit down or when they enter the restaurant. Um, I've been out a little bit eating out out in New York, and I've only actually seen one hostess that had hand sanitizer on it. Um, I thought I'd see it more, but I have but I haven't seen it. Um, so things like that, that just kind of reinforce what you're doing and that the guests have those things available to them. I think that really helps reinforce, you know, the rules are there, we're following them and, and we're showing them to you. It's, it's clear, right? Yeah. And I was um, on your website, Mashana, and you really state what you're doing. Um, you had mentioned just a minute ago using the UV, UV light treatment in, in the air circulation. And do you talk about that at all with guests? Is that something that comes up? 
I I don't know. I can imagine. I know all the all of the service staff service staff are versed in that language, and I think that when people have concerns, that it's we remind them of that in pre serve. So I'm not quite sure the amount of people who are asking of, about it. Like I don't know if guests are curious, but um, we but the staff is aware of that of that treatment. And we also have, um, so it's funny because um, thinking about service and setting up for service, now part of how we set up for service is we fill, fill all of the hand sanitizers before service. So we have a lot of, um, we have these um, bottles that you can spray sanitizer on your hand. Um, and so we fill those and we place those um, throughout the restaurant. Right, so nice visual. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's like did we moved on from like redoing, you know, marrying ketchup bottles into marrying <laughs> sanitizer bottles. Exactly. <laughs> um, something that Beatrice and I have talked about too is the idea of changing your tabletop. So really minimizing what is on the table and trying to demonstrate that whatever is here is here for you. Um, did you change that at all or adjust any of those protocols, Mishama, in your restaurant? We didn't, we thought about it because I really love that idea um, when we discussed it a few months ago. And I, I, talked, to, I talked to the staff about it and um, the managers about it, and we tried to figure out different ways. So in the outdoor seating, we do roll-ups. So we do roll-ups and all this, all everything's protected. We, t we um, don't put glasses down until the guest comes and sits down. But in the inside, we, we, we kept our, our table setting the same. Yeah. I'm just looking, we just got a, uh, a note or a question from somebody who's tuning in saying that they bring sanitizer when they bring the check, um, which is interesting. So, and that's something we've talked about before with um, another operator was the idea of maybe giving people a little takeaway of sanitizer so they can remember your brand um, and oh, also have something that, that's clean and, and sanitized in that moment. I think the check is actually sort of a, a, a funny moment. I've you know, definitely been in restaurants where you, you're advised to use a QR, QR code or um, some sort of remote form of payment. And then I've had people slap that <laughs> Amex check presenter down on the table like it's, you know, 1999 and you're like. <laughs> I um I had heard an operator who gives um to regular guests a little go bag and that go bag is a, a logo mask and a little sanitizer and it just rem it, it's something they take home with them and it just reminds them to come back. They don't give it they said they didn't give it to everyone but they gave it to like their regulars or you know whatever and and it, they really they really appreciate it. So I thought that was a a nice kind of thing that that people can take away with them. And then you have a logo mask. So if you need an extra mask or looking for a mask, you have this one that you now you're advertising for the for the yeah. restaurant. I thought that was a nice kind of, you know, instead of the fresh baked goods we used to give out <laughs> when people left, now we're giving them masks and sanitizer. It's, it's the new era, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It used to be, you know, you could buy a t-shirt of the restaurant. Now we give away a, a logo mask. <laughs> yes. Times have changed. I love all that. Um, and you mentioned that the, um, you know, the porter cleans the bathroom, et cetera. Do you do, have you had to change anything in terms of some of these high touch moments? Like we've noticed that some people have a sanitizer station outside of the restaurant or outside of the bathroom. So that if you have to touch handles and pull things, you've got a place to sanitize your hands. <laughs> Yeah, we have a lot of ledges, um, a lot of landings. For, um, so right outside the bathroom, there are ledges that we put candles and next to those candles we'll have a, and they're right outside the bathrooms, both upstairs and downstairs. So next to those candles, we have little bottles of sanitizer spray. Um, and the way that we present the check is on, um, a, like an individual postcard. And so when they give us the a payment, that payment is placed on a postcard with a clip and we take that away. So it's not quite a tray where, but there's no, you know, they put it down and then the server picks it up. So there's no sort of um, touching. But, um, but yeah, we keep, we sort of keep those bottles near the restrooms, near the server stations, the whole stand, 
um, right when you walk into the restaurant, there's this big curved open window um, so you can see the kitchen and uh, there's a spray bottle there. So all these kind of areas where people congregate or sort of need to touch something, there's a spray bottle next to it. Right. And something too, Beatrice and I, you know, have talked about and B, you had that experience with the, um, so the ketchup packets uh, yeah. delivered to you. Have you changed any of your um, methods of serving condiments at all or salt and pepper? Um, we don't serve condiments at the, <laughs> we don't serve condiments at the gray unless people ask for salt we'll put it in a ramekin or he ask for pepper uh we have the we have pepper grinders that we put on the table that we wipe down anything any anything we serve at the gray is served for an individual serving in a sanitized dish now for the gray market we have packets we have packets of everything that we keep behind the um behind um behind the counter so if someone needs something we we give them like they'll glove up and they'll grab what they need so if someone needs sugar they'll put a glove on and they'll grab the sugar packet and give them sugar if someone needs you know ketchup or mayonnaise where in the gray market we used to keep bottles down like ketchup bottles and mustard bottles and stuff like that but we don't do that anymore right so it's all about the ramekin Individual it's all about the American and the packets, but we sort of um, we we issue them out so people aren't you know digging into a basket full of you know ketchup packets. Yeah, Thank <laughs> which you. is not a good visual these days. <laughs> I, I dined out and there was a salt and pepper on the table, and uh, my fr my friend loves pepper and she said, should I use the pepper? And I said sanitize your hands, use the pepper, then sanitize your hands again. She said, okay. And then, <laughs> and then I watched the server kind of clear a table, you know, six feet away from us and he didn't wipe down the salt and pepper. And when he came back over, I said, can I just tell you something? And he said, sure. And I said, you know, I saw you clean the table and you did a great job. You wiped the chairs and made me feel comfortable. I said, but you didn't wipe the salt and pepper. And if people, other people touch that. And he goes, I didn't even think of that. Thank you. I'm going to do that from now on because it's not something we normally ever thought of doing before, right? Right. Yeah. It's like thank you, and I was like, you're welcome. <laughs> yeah, and that's that's a great segue for this next idea of you know training your team. If we can advance the next slide, but you know we've got to train people on hospitality and all these little things because we've all been trained. We're hardwired. It's muscle memory to do certain actions. And then we've got to train our teams to sort of stop doing those actions or or exchange them for other actions. So that idea of hospitality is so important because we need to train people to be a little more overt with you know, virtual hugs or you know we're happy to see you as opposed to the real ones. Um, but we've got to we've really got to train our our teams and all these these new important small and important protocols. So if we can advance the next slide. Um, you know, the idea is really getting your team up to speed, getting them really to understand the new normal. So be that, that idea of now we're between every guest, we're washing down the salt and pepper. That's a whole new thing for a lot of folks. Right. Yeah. So right. communication is, is really important. Um, you know, outlining everything that you want your team to do and, and putting that in a, in a new, um, you know, protocol book or having it online, whatever your training method is. Um, and then, you know, maybe having some signs to, to remind people around the restaurant in terms of your team, what they should be considering or thinking about doing, uh, maybe the new approach to our guests. I mean, it used to be the, the customer's always right and now the customer might not always be right. Um, like Mashama, you were talking about with your, your guests just oh, yeah. mm -hmm. plowing through the restaurant. Um, so we really need to train that in our teams. I know so you have an idea about the pre-shift meeting that's so helpful too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. pre-shift is really key right now because it's our way, there's so much going on and so much changing and evolving all the time. And it's confusing. It's confusing to the staff and management. And I think 
if you use that pre-shift a way to reinforce, to remind, uh, to ask what the, to communicate what are the challenges they're facing and discuss them together and kind of work it out together as a team. Like if this happens, what should I do? Or if this, you know, that pre-shift is really preparing people. It's, it is, it is the huddle before, you know, the, the Super Bowl or whatever it may be. You know, I, I always think of pre-shift as like, um, you, you don't train uh, for the Super Bowl and just train, you know, one time when you open, you know, when you start, you train every day, the whole team trains every day. And that's what that pre-shift is. It's an opportunity for the team to really talk about all different things that are challenging and then to reinforce those little things. Like don't forget to wipe the salt and pepper if that's the case or, or whatever it may be. So I think those meetings are really impactful now even more than at, more than before because there's just so much information and, oh, and sure. to communicate with your staff also to find out how they're feeling what's going on with them like what are their challenges and then try to address it together right mm -hmm. um, what so our service models changed um from the gray we were gray doing, we're doing a la carte we put menus around we put menus now we um when we first reopened we started doing uh, pre-fix menus and tasting menus and they were all verbal so the server would go to the table and they would talk they would you know in a very conversational way they would ask well how hungry are you what are you interested in do you have any allergies okay well this is what we have to offer and even though we have prefix menus and tasting menus you can order a la carte but it's encouraged that you get you know the full package and um the verbalizing of the menus were really difficult for the staff because they had to spend a lot of time at the table and we used to put down snacks and now we don't put down snacks anymore and so there's so it's just really um really exhausting for them and in pre-serve is where we learned that they were just having a hard time um navigating their sections if they had to spend so much time at a table so now we put now we put down menus so we do we we put down menus that we basically toss when people are done with them and so um and so that has provided a certain level of comfort to the service staff because i because when you start to get exhausted you start to feel unsupported and when you start to feel unsupported then it shows in in your in your mannerisms and feedback on whether or not you know it's working for the entire time and that you're talking about sort of the the rhythm of service and when we um change one piece of it it you know that internal rhythm um isn't the same so have you noticed in the kitchen at all that that's changed as well with some of these new protocols oh for sure i think the kitchen is i think the kitchen is doing better actually i don't i don't know i don't know why i think um i think the way that the line is set up the <laughs> prefix and sort of the prefix and the way that things are coming in waves. Um, I think it just really resonates with us back there because we know what we have to do. We know, you know, if, if 10 people sit down, we have to make 10 of the same thing at the same time. And we all sort of pitch in and help each other. The bar is um, a, a la carte menu still. So that kind of comes and puts a little bit of a, of a monkey wrench into things. But um, I think that the energy in the back of house is is calmer, and I think the front of house they're still nervous because they are guest facing. You know, we we are guest facing. We sort of hang, we see each other every day. We're protected. Um, it's difficult to expo with a mask on. It's hard for them to hear me sometimes. But um, that's really the biggest challenge in the back of house is just making sure that we, we they can hear the communication that's happening. But the front of house that they are the ones who are, are guest facing and taking the extra steps because we've always sort of washed our hands and cleaned our surfaces and wiped down and scrubbed and we do it multiple times a day. And for them, it's very new that they have to sanitize, you know, sanitize the tables every single time. 
um, not only wipe them down, but sanitize them. They have to get new, they have to get new um, menus every single time. They have to sanitize their hands every single time. So like that, that those habits are new for them, but uh, newer for them, but they're not as new for us. You know, I remember when we spoke before, Michelle, you were saying that when your team first came on property again, um, they were looking to you for how, sort of how are we going to navigate this, um, mm -hmm. which, which shows to me that it's really, a, it's a moment of leadership um, mm -hmm. for you and for your, you know, your, your fellow managers at the restaurant to really show them show them the way. Did you have to um, train or support your managers in a different way so that they could sort of take the lead? Oh, for sure. Like, I think the managers were the first people that we had to instill confidence in. And they had to become comfortable with understanding what the CDC guidelines are. Under And they were active participants in figuring out this new service. It wasn't something that you know we delegated to them. It was a group effort, and we sat down at our at a round table and discussed what would be best for them, what would be best for the staff, and from what's good for the guest point of view, um, because um, they had to sort of embody all that and feel comfortable with it, and in order to lead the team. I believe it. Mm -hmm. Let's advance the slide, and Beatrice, do you want to lead this one? So the new normal, um, it takes time to build habits as, as we've just been discussing. It's really important, it, it, new habits don't happen overnight and people going back into an environment where they used to work and they already have these old habits as Mashama mentioned, especially for the front of the house, is now a challenge because you're doing something you did for a long time and now you have to do it in a different way. And so I think it's reinforcing that and supporting is, is really important. Um, it's really important for everybody to stick to the rules. We, you know, and consistently, you know, no rogue uh, staff members in that way. And, and it's sort of that hospitality to the guest, whether it's a rebel or it's a fearful guest is really, you know, key here and being able to pivot and change in order to accommodate that. So that, that the, these are all part of the new normal is that hospitality is part of it. It just looks and feels in a different way now because we're addressing things that we never had to address before in hospitality. This, you know, bringing your sanitation out into the open where before we hid it in the back. We we cleaned and sanitized everything so the guests didn't see us polishing or, or doing all these things. And now we're taking it out into the open for them to see it to make them feel safe and comfortable. Um, so demonstrating that safety, that sanitation, right in view of guests makes them and, and the staff also feel comfortable and safe. Um, I think just consistently, you know, reinforcing the new normal and the communication, like you said, with your staff, you heard they, they said something, you heard them about the menus and verbal and you made the adjustment. And I think that's really important to that, to that trust with your staff and hospitality. And then it translates obviously to the guests. Yeah, so we you know we were alluding to it's not 2019 anymore. We're in September of 2020 now. Um, Mashama, do you think about what's next for your restaurant and for your team? Like what's going to happen in 2021 or when you can get to at some point 100 percent occupancy? I try not to. I <laughs> um, I I I think. You know, it's interesting, and I was waiting for the right time to talk about this. We talked about this a little earlier, but protocols are um, really important. Two of our staff members tested positive um, for COVID, and we talked to the staff about it. And, and talking to the staff was really that next step 
because I think what happens is that we create these protocols and we create these new normals, right? And we live within these new normals and we begin to trust them. And we say, okay, well, this is working and this is what how we need to come into work. We need to mask up, we need to sanitize, we need to wash our hands, we need to wipe down these surfaces, we need to give people new menus and all these practices that we're doing. And then all of a sudden, if when someone comes onto the team or it come, you know, someone on the team contracts COVID, it's like, what, what's the protocol after that, right? And so now we're sort of in the midst of figuring out the next protocol. And I think that's what the next step is, figuring out how to navigate you, your staff, and your guests through the contracting, um, contracting COVID because we're out there in the world, COVID's out there in the world, and there's high possibility that someone's going to have it, right? It's going to be a guest or it's going to be a staff member. So now, so I think the next step is really figuring out what, figuring out the protocols for the space and the staff as we navigate through these um, positive tests, because I think that's the that's going to be the, the ultimate future. Like someone on the team is going to test positive. So now someone on the team tested positive. The restaurant, you know, the, they hadn't been back to the restaurant since the restaurant had closed. So um, a team member tested positive. They called on the day that the restaurant was closed. The restaurant was sanitized. The staff, um, they called out. The, the restaurant was sanitized. The staff members came back to work. The staff was told that there was a positive test within the team, and they were still, they were worried. They were worried about their own safety. They were worried about their own interactions with the staff member that tested positive because we're in a small town. A lot of people hang out together outside of work, and, uh, and that's the part that's hard to monitor when you know you can monitor their interactions in work but outside of work you don't know what people are doing if they're drinking together eating together whatever so i think figuring out the next protocol is how not only do we keep guests facing high traffic areas sanitized but how do we keep the areas that we use sanitized um the the, the behind the bar and also um you know behind the bar the service stations like those things we need to start to implement practices too which is something that we didn't really think of because we thought of okay these high traffic areas we do that on a daily basis every day someone comes in a porter a manager they come in they wipe down the door handles um they do that before service during service we do it but who's wiping down behind the bar every day and how are they cleaning behind the bar they wipe down the bottles and they break down the bar but what is that level of sanitation and how and so so i think the future is figuring out how to keep the entire space sanitized in order to keep the the staff protected i love that mm -hmm. that's a really great point that's the reality of it right yeah because you can't control their whole lives you can only control when you're there so yeah, it's another way of setting that expectation for we really are taking care of you, which is important mm -hmm. for your team, mm -hmm. essential for your team. Yeah. We're sort of at the end of our time here, ladies. Uh, B, do you have anything else to add? We can advance the slide. No, I think we've, we've touched, we've covered quite a lot. It was a, a good conversation today. Yeah. Agreed. Well, I hope your team members uh, recover quickly, Mashama. Nice to see you again. Thanks, nice Mia, as always. Always great to work with you. And for anybody who's watching right now, feel free to keep in touch with us. Our emails are here. Um, we love keeping the conversation going. So, yeah. Thanks Thank so much. You. This, is, uh, Thank this, you. Uh, this is perfect timing. I needed to talk about these things. It's <laughs> good to have these conversations now. <laughs> Anytime. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you to uh, Beatrice, Kate, and Mashama for providing a wonderful presentation and sharing their expertise with us this morning. This session um, is available for on-demand viewing um, in a week if you would like to uh, revisit the content. 
And please be sure to check out the sessions that will be running throughout the rest of today and tomorrow. So again, thank you for joining us at Live at Your Table. Have a good day. Well, thank you. Yeah, nice to see you again. Not yeah, just... <laughs> well, they signed off, so I guess they're done with us. <laughs> 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 well, stay in touch, and this is good work. I know it's important. Yes. Yeah, good luck with everything. Thanks for all being so honest with your situation there. That's intense. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, and, they, and I think, you know, I'm going to call, I'm going to call a few people and reach out to them and just see if they, what, if they're being proactive. And that's the part where I think that I really want to start to focus on, because I think that we can't, like, we're making decisions to go back into this world and work. And I don't think that they should, I don't want them to take the attitude of, um, they're doing us a favor or we owe them anything or anything like that. And I think that they may be teetering on that a little bit, which I think is negative. It's a negative way to look at it. So I think um, I think going back in and making sure that they're being proactive with their own health is um, really important. And I think that's the message that we need. Don't hide in the dark because you're fearful of, you know, you know, sharing a cigarette with someone on Sunday night, and now you think you have COVID, you should go see if you have COVID. <laughs> you should go get tested, you know? And so I think that, that, I think the link between those two actions are important because I think they are really becoming, I think that emotional part can start to debilitate you a little bit, you know? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, anyway, well, have a good day. You too. It's so great to see you, Mashama. Thanks for sharing. You're welcome. Good to see you too. Bye. Okay. Take care, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.